Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Arma Guides. Today we will be taking a look at the process of setting up an Arma 3 server. Now before I get into any of this I want to note that this requires you have port forwarded your router to support an Arma 3 server. If you have not done that none of what I'm about to show you will work. There will be a link in the description to one of my most recent guides which covers that whole process. So if you haven't done any of that I highly recommend you go check that out. Now let's go ahead and get right into this. The first thing you will need when it comes to starting a server is having an actual mission to host on that server. The two easiest ways to get a mission is to either download one through the Steam Workshop or to create one yourself in the Eden Editor. For the sake of this video, we will simply be downloading one through Steam. So you're going to go ahead, you're going to open up your Steam app. You can do this through the web browser as well. I personally find it easiest to just go directly through the Steam desktop app. So you open that up. You'll go to Community, Workshop, and then you'll go and search for Arma 3. Only one option should come up. You'll click on that, and then you'll be greeted with this page, which lists hundreds, if not thousands, of different add-ons and maps and things like that for Arma 3. And you're going to go right here, and you're going to filter for Scenario. And this will filter to all the different maps and missions people have made, and... To download one, all you have to do is simply hit this little button, or you can actually click on the mission and go and hit subscribe. Now, a lot of these will require mods. If they do require mods, I can almost guarantee that the creator will have the mods listed in the description. You can simply go and install those and then launch your game running all those mods, and then the mission should work. Uh, there's also tons of missions in here that are completely vanilla. You don't have to have any mods or add-ons or anything for them to work. So there's options for people who want to go vanilla they can go lightly modded heavily modded there's plenty of options depending on what you want to do so once you have found one of these missions and downloaded it the next thing you're going to want to do is open up your arma 3 so let's go ahead and do that so once you have started your arma 3 you will of course be greeted with arma 3's home menu from here you will go to multiplayer server browser and then host server you can set your name to whatever you would like, and then for your host type, you're given two options, LAN and Internet. LAN is a local area network, so you do not have to port forward for this, but only people on your Internet network will be able to connect. Internet allows anyone in the world with an Internet connection to join the server, but you will have to have port forwarded your router for this one to work. And of course, anyone on your own network will be able to join as well, so... If you have, say, a friend at your house and then friends who are five states away do internet, if it's just you and a few buddies at your own house, you can do the LAN. Your port, you can do 2302. I do not recommend changing this. Max players, you can set this to whatever you want. Password can be whatever you want. UP, NP, do not check this. Just leave that unchecked and then hit host server, at which point you'll be greeted with this menu here which will list all the different maps you have. If you have modded maps, they will show up in this list as well. When you select one of these maps, over here on the right, it will list all the available missions for that specific map. White is the vanilla missions that are in the game whenever you first install it. Green are missions that you yourself have created in the Eden Editor and then saved. And orange are missions you have downloaded, it, downloaded whether it be from Steam or other third-party companies. Now, Simply launch one of these missions, just highlight the mission when you'd like, hit play, it will load up and you'll be greeted with the role assignment menu. From here, you can choose your different roles, you can mute players, kick players, any of the things you might need to do as a server host. Once everyone has chosen their slots, you simply hit OK and it will load up the server. An important thing to note is no one else can load in before you. So for anyone else to be able to choose a slot, hit OK, and actually load into the world, you will have to have done that first. Otherwise, they will just sit in the role assignment menu queued up to load in. So that, that can be useful. It can also be annoying at sometimes. That's just something to be aware of. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at your options for starting an Eden Editor mission that you have not saved as a finished file. So if you have a mission that you have made in the Eden Editor and you have not saved it as a finished file, it will not show up in the Create Server menu under Multiplayer. 
but it is still possible to host this mission file on a server. To do this, simply go to your editor tab, select whatever map you would like, hit continue, give it a and then once you have loaded, you will be greeted with the Eden Editor system, whatever you would like to call it. Now, to load your mission, you will simply go up to Scenario here in the corner. You will go to Open. You will find the mission that you have made and would like to host on the server, and you will hit Open. Now, once you have done that, you will go up here to your top under Play. You'll click that, and then you'll select Play and Multiplayer. Just like before, name can be anything you want. Host type, you can do LAN or internet, it depends on the situation. LAN doesn't need port forwarding, internet does. Port, do not change that, leave that as 2302. Max players, this can be whatever you want. Password, whatever you want, and UPNP, leave that unchecked. Once you've done that, simply hit OK, and you'll be loaded into the role assignment menu. Now, just like before, everyone can choose their teams, they can choose their soldier type, everything. You can disable AI. You can lock, you can mute players, kick players, anything you might need to do. And just as before as well, you will have to load in first. Otherwise, everyone will sit in a queue waiting to load into the mission. So this is super simple. And if you need to test a mission and multiplayer things such as that, you can do it through this. Or if you just have a mission file that you don't like saving as a finished file, you can open it through here and technically never have to actually publish that mission file. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how you would actually connect to one of these servers once it has been hosted. The process of actually connecting to a server is super, super simple. All you're going to go or all you're going to do is go to multiplayer, server browser, direct connect, and then you will enter the public IP that server is hosted under, and then that server port. By default, that port should be 2302. And then the address will be whatever the public IP is of the person hosting the server. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how you actually get that IP. Finding your public IP to give to your friends so they connect, can connect to the server is a super simple task as well. All you have to do is go to a web browser, this can be Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari, it can really be anything, and you will simply type in IP. And then right here at the very top, it should list your public IP. You will copy and paste that number, you will give it to your friends, and that's the IP that they will use whenever direct connecting to the server. Now, this does classify as a form of private information. I don't recommend just giving this to anyone. There isn't much you can do with it, but uh, people can still access your general location and things such as that with this number. So don't just go giving it to completely random strangers you find all over the internet. That is pretty much everything for this guide. I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you in the next one.